TGI Friday, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast for August 25th. Mercury retrograde full swing now. And I'm wrapping up some things here and getting ready to head back home. And I thought just because it's a travel day, if you don't mind, let's listen to some Steve Forrest. So I found this section from the Book of Earth because we had that big grand trine in Earth in the chart this week, right? And also Mercury, Virgo, Earth, one of the Earth signs, and Mercury went retrograde this week. So I thought, hmm, this is a good combination. Let's check this out. And what Steve is writing about here is planetary synthesis. And nobody does it better than Steve. So let's put all of this together from this week and this little snippet from the Book of Earth. Astrologers speak glibly of Mercury as if it were part of a secret code we had cracked. And we are right, at least in part. Cracking the soul code of the heavens is indeed one of humanity's most brilliant accomplishments. But Mercury's actual meaning is so fluid so potentially variable that claiming we know anything at all about it verges on pure hubris. Here, at the human, experiential level, is the face of reality. Mercury and Scorpio in the third house, squared by Jupiter. Or Mercury and Libra in the tenth. Or Mercury and Pisces trine Venus. It is these triads of planet, sign, and house, flavored by aspects, that are the fundamental quantum units of astrological reality. That is how we actually experience the human face of the planets. It is those triads that we must understand if we are to give, or receive, helpful astrological counsel. And even with the same planet at the center, they differ from each other Profoundly. How Signs Interact with Planets The best way I know to understand the meaning of the twelve astrological signs is to think of them as motivational agendas, goals and values, which animate our behavior. Illustration There's a big loud party tonight. You'll have a chance to meet dozens of cool people you've never met before. Aren't you excited? Get out your dancing shoes. Well, if you are an introvert, you probably blanched as you heard those words. If you're an extrovert, the prospect of meeting those strangers probably had a certain allure. Introversion is not a psychiatric disorder. Extroversion is not inherently virtuous. Likewise, vice versa. They're just different ways of being human, different values different motivational agendas. As such, they reflect the nature of the astrological signs. Some are introverted, while some are extroverted. Everything else being equal, if you put Mercury in Libra, the Libran agenda of making human connections animates a person's mercurial curiosity. Put Mercury in Capricorn, and Mercury's cognitive agenda is motivated by the seagoat's eye on the prize attitude. Quickly, with Mercury and Capricorn rather than Libra, wasting time meeting random strangers for no practical reason at all loses its appeal. It is essential to avoid value judgments here. Beyond the core principles of natural law, don't kill, don't steal, protect the children, There are countless perfectly fine ways of being human. Each sign is ultimately a legitimate evolutionary path, and in each one there are instinctual values that arise to support it. One essential quality in the professional astrologer is the ability to avoid projecting his or her values onto other people, to meet them where they are as that mystery is revealed in their birth charts. Back to Mercury. What is the right cognitive style for you? How can you best learn? What are your most productive interests? What is your optimal relationship with language? Mercury itself cannot answer any of those questions. Mercury is those questions, all of them. What answers them is the sign in which Mercury finds itself. We think similarly with Venus and Saturn and really with all of the rest of the planets. 
we cannot understand their actual manifest natures unless we place them in the motivational context of a particular sign. With Venus, what values must be optimized in a relationship that is truly good for you? What qualities characterize your natural mate? And by the way, is it even helpful for you to think about having a natural mate? What about your tastes and relationship to the world of aesthetic choices? How can you best find peace? For answers to those questions, again look to the sign Venus occupies. Saturn works the same way. Certain particular values naturally animate your ability to recognize the exact nature of the great work that is worthy, fruitful, and appropriate for you. How can you best simply make meaningful things happen in your life? What qualities must you cultivate in order to develop self-respect and true maturity? In a nutshell, the twelve signs of the zodiac are what make the planets human, giving them character, engaging them with life's possibilities, and life's hard choices. Otherwise, they remain in the abstract, platonic realm we call the heavens. A map for the next few minutes of your life. In this chapter, my plan is to explore in some depth a single example of each one of our Earth planets as they are conditioned by having their presence in a particular sign. In doing that, I'm hoping to give you a feeling for how the planet sign synthesis works in practice. In Chapter 8, we'll do the same for a planet in each of the houses. My hope is that some of the deeper interpretive processes we consider in this present chapter will breathe life into those short thumbnail descriptions. Learning to think astrologically is always the truest goal. While cookbook paragraphs can be helpful, if you're not careful, they can also make you look like the kid in your neighborhood who never got rid of the training wheels on his bicycle. A few lines ago, I wrote that it is the triads of planet, sign, and house flavored by aspects that are the fundamental quantum units of astrological reality. Here, in this chapter, we're only concerned with how signs fit into the picture. As I mentioned, the next chapter brings us to the twelve astrological houses in the same way. Adding aspects to the mix is essential as well. Mercury and Virgo, squared by Neptune, is not your grandmother's Mercury and Virgo especially if hers were conjunct Saturn. Unlike her, your Mercury might have lost the car keys again, even though it can write poetry that puts tears in everyone's eyes. Meanwhile, Grandma balances her checkbook to the penny, but she tends to take your poetic metaphors a little bit too literally. There are so many possible aspectual combinations that all I can do is to help you figure them out for yourself. We will have a look at how aspects fill out the picture in Chapter 15. For now, let's roll the dice and come up with three random planet sign combinations. Let's watch Venus, Mercury, and Saturn as they each dance with an individual sign. We'll start with Venus in Capricorn. But our real aim here is not so much to understand that particular combination as to grasp the basic strategy for seeing how a sign shapes the agenda of a planet. Venus in Capricorn The sea goat loves getting to the peak of the mountain. It is hungry to set out across the wide ocean, bound for the farthest shore. Earlier in the book, we invoked the fascination of what's difficult as a way of understanding Capricorn. So what happens when focused, serious values such as those animate one's intimate Venusian choices? There's not one single answer that fits everyone. As always with astrology, each symbol represents a wide spectrum of possibilities, ranging from self-destruction to enlightenment. And each planet, sign, house, triad 
interacts with the rest of the chart, typically in paradoxical ways. But we have to start somewhere, and a planet and a sign is always part of the foundation. And the entire Elements series is available on Audible and on iTunes, which is now Apple Books. You don't need a subscription, especially if you go to Audible. They make it look like you do, but promise me you do not. <laughs> I have a bunch of books in my Audible account, and I do not have a subscription. So you can buy them individually, or you can go over to Apple Books if you're on that platform. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with Ray Merriman. Hopefully, I think he's doing well. I've been seeing some tweets through the week. So we'll check in with him and see you again back here on Monday. Hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for listening this week. We'll see you tomorrow morning, hopefully from home base.